Okay. Okay, so this video is called The Red Megalodon's 100 Times More Dangerous Than a Megalodon. Oh my goodness. Um, this Red Megalodon is fake. From what I heard of, this guy treats it as if it's real. I don't know. Like, I haven't watched a full video about it, so I don't know. Anyway, enjoy. If you're a fan of prehistoric animals, then you might have heard about the mighty Megalodon. It's a shark. It's like 20, 25 meters. It's a Megalodon. 25 meters sounds like a bit of an exaggeration when it comes to the Megalodon. For those who might not be familiar with it, the Megalodon is a huge prehistoric animal that dwells in the sea. Said to be multiple times larger than any sea creature known today. And then Blue Whale just cries in the corner after you said that. Although it sadly went extinct many years ago. Despite the fact that it's no longer with us, the Megalodon's shadow continues to loom when it comes to aquatic animals. Nah, it's just regular sharks. The Megalodon already went extinct. So, there will be no trace of Megalodon still alive today. However, you might think that this mammoth of an animal would have been the king of the seas, but new discoveries have shown that there are even larger animals that could have easily dwarfed it in size and ferociousness. I mean, Leviathan has a better chance of defeating Megalodon than a Megalodon beating Leviathan. What are those animals? How long did they live? And what was their fate? Kick back and relax, because I've got all the details for you. I thought we were talking about the quote-unquote Red Megalodon. Join us as we have a look at creatures that might have been much more dangerous than the Megalodon. The baddest dudes in the sea. More dangerous than the Megalodon. I guess the only ones that qualify are the Leviathan and another Megalodon. Oh, that's it. By any stretch of the word, the Megalodon was an incredibly large animal. Take this for context. Today, most of the sharks you see vary in size. Most of them can be anywhere between 5 to 7 feet long, while exceptional ones can be even bigger. The hammerhead ranges between 11 to 18 feet, while the great white shark easily hits that 20 feet mark. It has become clickbait at this point. Like any of these bright side videos would be. Still though, none of them could even touch the Megalodon. During its time as an apex predator, the Megalodon easily hit 60 feet in size. Size is not determined by length. Size is determined by mass, at least in terms of paleontology and stuff. And here's the kicker. Some of them were even larger. Basically, the great white today would have been no larger than the Megalodon's reproductive organs. Basically, while the massive Tyrannosaurus Rex was the king of the land, the Megalodon was the undisputed king of the sea. Undisputed. I say it, Livyatan as well. It also, it, Megalodon actually had competition when it comes to sea dominance. And with such an incredible size, it's no small wonder that the Megalodon was such a strong animal. According to some research, the big fish had quite the bite force pressure, around 40,000 pounds per square inch, and that's actually the largest bite force of any animal ever measured living or extinct. It's always the Jurassic Park. At this point, is there any point in complaining Jurassic about Jurassic Park anymore? Well, Jurassic Park stuff is outdated. They act like animals though, so like, that's cool. And for comparison, the T-Rex had a bite force measuring 12,000 pounds per square inch. And while we humans only measure about 160 pounds per square inch ourselves, this incredible bite force complemented jaws that measured 9 to 11 feet in size, enough to swallow an average size human being in a single bite. But we're still talking about Megalodon, not stuff that is more dangerous than the Megalodon. Man. So yes, the Megalodon was undoubtedly not one to be messed around with. Now, considering its incredible size, it's no wonder that the Megalodon used its influence and pretty much acted like the baddest one in the seas, no animal would be safe from the Meg in prehistoric times. Um, wouldn't it act like a predator? Like, 
hunting when it's hungry, and not just being a bloodthirsty monster like the ones in Jurassic Fight Club. In fact, the fossil records have shown bite marks of the megalodon on some of the largest baleen whales in the period. It just goes to show that no creature, whether great or small, was even a match for this massive beast. In terms of hunting, however, megalodons and great white sharks were not necessarily on the same page. You see, even today, most of the great whites that you see are ambush hunters. They will stalk their prey, then catch them and draw them deeper into the ocean, where they then have a better chance of finishing the job. The megalodon, however, would be much more aggressive. Why would it be aggressive? It should also just be another ambush predator, like any most other predators. Most other predators just ambush. No predators would give their prey any warning of their presence. And of course, given its size, the megalodon did not necessarily know how to be stealthy. Not that it really needed stealth. The thing is, most of the prey would just swim away. That just causes the megalodon to starve to death. The animal was more into brute force than any other fish. The megalodon's preferred diet would be large marine animals, and according to scientists, it would most likely take apart its prey in a systematic fashion, tearing its fins and tail before devouring it, and then, while great whites usually draw their prey under the ocean, the megalodon would attack from underneath, tearing its prey wide open before taking it apart and feasting on its succulent meat. While the megalodon was a pretty large and ruthless animal, most scientists claim that it didn't have overly strong bones. Oh, I thought that guy was finally getting to the point of this title of a video. And, and also what the guy also said about animals more dangerous than megalodon. Guess I was wrong then. <laughs> Sad. They believe that this, along with the natural evolution of the world, must have been the reason why the megalodon went extinct. However, it is worth noting that this might not have been the case. Nah, I'm 100% confident that the megalodon is extinct. Most shark skeletons have a ton of cartilage, and although their connective tissues effectively disintegrate over time after they die, it could just be a case of not having enough fossil records to know the characteristics. Nevertheless, it seems quite obvious that the megalodon was one insanely strong animal that was not to be messed with. And even though they all went extinct around 2.6 million years ago, their shadow still very much looms amongst the animals of the oceans today. What do you mean by that? It's not like all of these anim marine animals have PTSD on the megalodon and, uh, and they remember the megalodon's existence at all. None of them would remember the megalodon's existence. Discerning the Megalodon Sizes Like many animals of the sea, the megalodon were not homogenous. You had different variations, with most of the classifications being based on size and stature. Doesn't mean it's so different to the point that some of the megalodons look like killer whales. To kick things off, we have the gray megalodon. Oh, good lord, I'm not ready for this. Um... These, these are probably not going to be real. These were usually the largest of the bunch, with bigger bodies and more ferocious appetites. These guys ate pretty much anything and would just as well show up on the scene and have everyone scamper away because they were so huge. And this is why they're going to starve to death. It's just not feasible. Then we have the Red Megalodon. They were not as large as the gray megalodon, coming in at about 40 to 45 feet in length. However, they were actually the more dangerous of the two, interestingly enough. And if you think about it like this, whatever type that it was, the megalodon was probably the biggest animal in the seas. How about the Livyatan and later the blue whale? However, that same size is what made the gray megalodon such a formidable force to be reckoned with, and it was also one of its biggest disadvantages. Because these animals were so large, maneuvering in the ocean was quite the challenge, and hunting elusive and fast prey would be almost impossible. To that effect, gray megalodons were mostly lazy and slow, and when they did eventually eat, it would mostly be animals that were very slow at evasion. Or perhaps it would just simply bully another animal into eating its food. What do you mean by bully? Um, okay. 
Gray Megalodon. I don't think that thing would even exist, even exist as a real... Oh my goodness. There is no reason for me to take this seriously. On the flip side though, the red Megalodon was much more agile and quick due to its smaller size. It was able to move underwater easily, hide in almost plain sight, and even hunt some of the quickest and most elusive of prey. But the water is turquoise blue. And, and the stuff below, gray and stuff like that. The red Megalodon would have much more trouble trying to blend in with the sea and stuff. And it'll just die even easier than the gray Megalodon, actually. And if you want to know the real kicker, due to the disparities in size and speed, the red Megalodon could actually snatch food from the mouth of a gray Megalodon and run away. It's not like the big guy could give any chase now, is it? Combine this with the fact that red Megalodons were still leaps and bounds bigger than most other animals, and you'd see that the world was literally their oyster. Red Megalodons had teeth measuring about 8 inches in length. This guy is legitimately treating the Red Megalodon and the Gray Megalodon, especially the Red Megalodon, as if they were real animals, which couldn't be farther from the truth. So hunting was never an issue in any sort of way. And another significant reason why the animals were so dangerous was that they had a herd mentality. According to scientists, red megalodons would usually gather and hunt in groups, taking advantage of the strength in numbers approach to overshadow their prey. Oh my goodness. This video is just absolutely insane already. There really is nothing else to it other than being stupidly crazy. And if you think about it, one red megalodon is already too much to handle if you're any kind of sea creature, but to have a bunch of them moving around and on the prowl would be a completely untenable situation that I would probably not even wish on my worst enemy. You know, a lot of times you're just using the same footage. Don't think I didn't notice. Now, of course, the sad part of the entire thing was that red megalodons also did not have so much food at the end of the day because they hunted in packs and pretty much scared the living daylights out of any other animal. They didn't have so much to eat. And so they lived mostly nomadic lives moving across the great expanse of the oceans and never really having a place they could settle down in. Okay. I don't know where you're getting th all this information from. I'm not surprised. Like, this guy's just making up stuff at this point. Because the red megalodon is not even real. All in all, it's safe to say that no animal that lived in the ocean wanted any smoke with these guys. The Megalodon was a ferocious beast that had an incredible mixture of size and strength and which would easily rip any other animal to shreds. They weren't scared of anyone and pretty much all animals were fodder to them. If you were going to really go toe to toe with any of them, you had better be ready. This was especially true for the Red Megalodon. Okay, so this guy is actually getting to the point of the video, but the, me the Red Megalodon is not real. This is, this would probably be an entertaining video if the guy did not treat the med red megalodon as if it was real. Despite not being the largest of the bunch, the red megalodon was a menace in the ocean and was still pretty large, but it also had the advantage of being much faster and deadlier. This, as well as the animal's penchant for moving in packs and hunting as a collective, meant that no one was safe from them. The moment you see a squad of red megalodons moving across the scene, you would better move out of the way, that is, before you become collateral damage as well. Even though they must have been insanely awesome, I think it is safe to say, I'm happy that megalodons don't exist anymore. Well, awesome is really not the best way to describe these prehistoric animals, especially when it comes to a serious, quote-unquote, educational paleontology video like this. It just, it feels just wrong to call them awesome in this type of video. Having these guys as part of our oceanic system today would be quite the lot to deal with all at once. The Great Titans of the Sea At this point, it should have become pretty obvious that the Megalodon was one of the scariest and most incredible masters of the sea. Okay, is that the Meg? I feel like this is supposed to be the Meg which is an armored megalodon. It was untouchable in its era and pretty much ruled the oceans with an iron. 
That is a poorly edited Megalodon CGI thing. Uh, with the Megalodon as part of a green screen, that got removed, of course. The water, over here, used from what if? Alright. Missed. However, it is worth noting that this was only a small part of the world's incredible history. And as different eras came and went, so did the animals that followed. The oceans have seen a great number of species come and go, and while we can all argue which was the biggest and baddest of them all, there have been some that have truly stood out of the pack over the millennia. And so, which other animals were so massive? The Leviathan. Oh. Now we're back with all these clickbait bright side S stuff. I was hoping that the red megalodon would just be the entire topic, but given that this video is 23 minutes long, uh, yeah, I don't have much hope. If you've ever seen a list that ranks the largest and most dangerous of sea monsters of all time, and it doesn't include the leviathan, then you should probably go ahead and bin it. This animal was so large that some even believed it to have been the greatest direct rival to the megalodon. Both lived around the same period and had comparable sizes, so you can just imagine how explosive a conflict between them would have been. They usually wouldn't engage with each other, even if they had to compete for resources. I just don't see how they would risk their lives trying to attack each other in order to get one to assert dominance. In any case, it's usually seen by many as the ancestor of the popular sperm whale. These animals lived millions of years ago, and they were as grand as they were terrifying. Now, to be fair, we don't actually know much about this creature. In fact, the fossil of the animal found in 2008 only showed its head, nothing about the rest of the body. And so, most of what scientists know and theorize about this creature comes from a scan of that head. I'm a bit bored because of all this clickbait stuff, and I always have to complain Man. Uh, well, extra watch time, that's something else, but, like, I'm, my, my mouth is getting tired after complaining about, like, almost 100 paleontology videos. Man. Guys, I don't need a break, alright? The general consensus among scientists, though, is that the Leviathan had a length of about 44.3 feet. From what I heard of, the Leviathan was even longer than that as well as a massive weight of up to 50 tons. The teeth of the largest one ever found reached around 16 inches in length, which is up to twice the size of a Tyrannosaurus rex. Let me correct you, almost twice the length of the Tyrannosaurus's teeth. And given that the Leviathan and the Megalodon lived around the same time period, there's no doubt that they must have had their conflicts, especially when it came to competition for food. And it kind of makes you wonder who would have won the fight if things came to blows. Lifyatan, more likely. I mean, sure, megalodons were more aggressive and could even hunt in packs to really demoralize any prey. However, being the ancestors of whales, there's a sense that the leviathan was smarter and had a more evolved intellect. And then it would just win the battle. So, yeah, megalodon is not invincible. And just like their descendants, the sperm whales, leviathans are credited to have had some form of echolocation that they could use to communicate and hunt. Combine all of this with the fact that they were comparable in size to the megalodon, and I think it's safe to say that we might have a massive battle on our hands. Well, such occasions were rare. Neither predator would want to mindlessly risk their lives if those two had ever crossed paths. When the other animals ran out, they could have even hunted each other. But the winner will just starve anyway because of the ecosystem being destroyed. But if I was really pressed to choose who I think would win, I might want to give the advantage to the Megalodon here. Something about that herd mentality just makes me think it would be almost impossible to knock them off their perch. Is there any evidence of Megalodon being herd animals, though? Um, from what I heard of, no. The Zygophysitor. Speaking of the Leviathan, it would be pretty appropriate to mention its smaller and more aggressive cousin. How do you speculate a prehistoric animal if it's aggressive or not? The Zygophysitor varroli. 
The Zyko Fessiter was also seen by many scientists as a possible ancestor to the sperm whale, although some would believe that it might have been more closely related to the modern-day dolphin above anything else. This is primarily because, unlike the Leviathan, this creature only reached between 23 and 28 feet in length. But, like, dolphins are much smaller, and the Zygo Fisetter seems more like a sperm whale than a dolphin. Which is not as large as the other two animals, but is still pretty much bigger than most of the scariest animals who are available under the surface of the sea today. With teeth that measured between 6 and 8 inches in length, it was also quite the menacing creature. Like the red megalodon, however, it... Oh, not the red megalodon again. The red megalodon is absolutely crazy. What are you doing? It was known to be aggressive and ruthless when it hunted. Because it was not as large as the leviathan, the animal had more work to do when it came to the hunting department. But with a bite force of almost 2,500 pounds per square inch, I doubt that would have been much of a problem. This creature's smaller size also meant that it could hunt much better, moving quickly through the water to catch its prey. And its use of echolocation meant that it could hide better from possible predators while also hunting their prey with increased accuracy and precision. Okay, this kind of feels like a win-win situation here. This guy does post facts about these animals that have nothing to do with the red megalodon, the quote-unquote red megalodon, which is totally not 100% fake. Uh, and, uh, there really isn't much to say about this video other than being a generic clickbaity mess. It should also be noted that these animals did not do much in groups. The Zycofesseter was most likely a solo hunter, which meant that it had a lot more to do to work to get to its food. It's unclear whether they lived around the same time as the Megalodon, or if they came a bit later, after the latter had gone extinct, but still, considering that any fight between the Megalodon and the Leviathan would have been a stalemate, I'm not sure that the Megalodon would have had much issue dispatching one of these. Yeah, in this case, the Megalodon would win simply because it's bigger in you know, and It's not as big as the Leviathan. It does not stand much for chance compared to Leviathan. Not Leviathan. Oh my god, this video has infected me. Leviathan! Then again, though, perhaps they had some ace in the hole that we just don't know about. The Sarcosuchus. That's not exactly a marine creature. Also, if it were to put in a fight against Megalodon, especially in the sea, the Megalodon wins 1,000% of the time. When you think of the craziest predators in the oceans today, one of the first animals that may come to your mind would be the crocodile. Known for their incredible bite force and ability to wrestle prey back into their domain, crocodiles are seen by many as part of the top of the food chain, as long as sea creatures are concerned. The thing is, Sarcosuchus is not a crocodile, nor is it even a crocodilian. And so, it made me think, where did they actually come from? Well, just like the Leviathan, it was also an ancestor of the modern sperm whale. Well, crocodiles get their origin from the Sarcosuchus. No, the Sarcosuchus was not even a crocodilian. Like the crocodile, the Sarcosuchus was not necessarily a full-on sea monster. It usually inhabited freshwater bodies and only went deep into the water when it absolutely had to. Still, though, we can safely classify these. This model must be from some sort of game. It looks so cartoonish, all right? As aquatic creatures nonetheless, and what a creature it was. The Sarcosuchus lived in the early Crustaceous period, which is said to have been 95 to 115 million years ago. Sarcosuchus did not live 95 million years ago. It's known by many as the largest crocodile to have ever walked the earth. It's not even a crocodilian for God's sake. Also, have you forgotten about Dinosuchus? Although, it did mostly inhabit what is now South America and Africa. With a skull that measured close to 2 meters in length, it had a head that was about twice the size of any modern era crocodile. The animal usually hit up to 30 feet in length with up to 4 tons of raw muscle weight. However, unlike modern crocodiles that tend to stop growing when they hit a specific age, the Sarcosuchus did not necessarily have a limit on its growth. Doesn't mean that it's more dangerous than the Megalodon. 
Um, are you going to try and throw in the red megalodon somewhere? These animals could continue growing as big as possible as long as they were in good condition and were getting a steady diet. According to scientists, the largest of these animals could have been as long as 40 feet, with up to 10 tons in weight. The Sarcosuchus had a long snout that covered about 75% of its entire skull's length, with an upper jaw much longer than its lower. Still facts that have nothing to do with the title of the video itself. Yeah, um, is this guy turning into a bright side clone at this point? Creating an overbite that would expose some of its massive teeth. Now, while no one knows exactly how long these teeth were, we barely need to, the Sarcosuchus had about 35 of them on each side of its upper jaw, as well as 31 on every side of its lower jaw. Like its descendants, it had thick, scaly skin, its legs were short, and it boasted a long and muscular tail which it used to move itself at high speeds when it was underwater. There really is no point in trying to complain on some more facts anymore. It's just that they have nothing to... Oh, goodness. Um... What do I even see anymore? Another unique feature of the animal was its large, broad knob at the tip of its snout, known as the bola. While experts have not come to a consensus about what the knob may have been used for, most believe that it would have helped it to get a better grip on its prey, or perhaps even send out sound frequencies. Given how strong that most crocodiles are today, and how they can clench their jaws, it wouldn't be that difficult to imagine exactly how strong the Sarcosuchus would have been. And it wouldn't even be the strongest. Also, it could not do the death roll, alright? Dinosuchus can. And with well over a hundred teeth, I would hate to imagine what it would have felt like once this animal caught the prey in its grip. And do you want to know something even crazier? The mouth of one of these beasts alone had a span of about six feet. That meant that one of them could literally swallow an average-sized human being in a single bite. Something like the Megalodon could also swallow a human in one single bite. Based on its dentations and the shape of its snout, many experts have theorized that the creature mostly had a similar diet to that of the Nile crocodile. The animal would have probably had a varied diet consisting of almost anything it could overpower and kill. This meant everything from large land animals to sea creatures were on the menu for the super croc. I feel like I've heard people describe Sarcosuchus as a super croc more than once now. Scientists have theorized that, unlike the modern crocodile, this creature probably was not able to do the famous death roll. But considering its size and imposing nature, I really doubt that it would have needed to. Well, it didn't really need to death roll anyway. Sakosuke's his jaws are simply too powerful. Basilosaurus. The Basilosaurus is an animal with a pretty interesting name. When its remains would first be discovered, it was actually named Basilosaurus, a name that translates to king lizard in Greek. However, while the suffix to its name might imply that the creature was a reptile, further research would confirm that it was actually a prehistoric whale. An ancestor of whales, yes. This is how paleontology works. You can't really be surprised to find out Basilosaurus was indeed a mammal. Still though, the name stuck, and it's been like that for all these years. According to some experts, it lived between 39 and 45 million years ago. 45 million years ago is perhaps too early. But 39 million years ago is part of the acceptable time range. The animal was incredibly long, reaching between 44 and 66 feet in length. It's said that the creature possessed a body that looked like a cross between a snake and an eel. Besides its massive length, it also weighed about 10 tons, which made it one of the heaviest animals of the sea. Well, at its time, maybe. But when it comes to overall, no. Basilosaurus whales were known to be much more sleek and modern whales with small limbs on the back of their bodies that measured about 24 inches. Most of the experts say that these limbs probably did more to help with mating than it did with moving, since the Basilosaurus was adept at swimming already. These animals were also known to have teeth, with scientists claiming that most of the fossils that were found show signs of wear. By the way, I forgot to say, the Basilosaurus 
weighed more than 5.8 metric tons, B. Cetoides, B. Isis, and weighed nearly 6.5 metric tons. It is similar in length to the Megalodon. This meant that the animals most likely preferred to chew their food before swallowing it, and it's unclear how many teeth they actually had, although considering that they mostly fed on large and aquatic animals, it's fair to say that they possessed quite the number of those chompers. Some discoveries of ancient Basilosaurus skeletons have helped to provide some insight into their diet. For instance, one full skeleton found in Egypt came with other skeletons within its belly. Nothing special, nothing new. It's just digestion and stuff. These included those of large fish and indicated that even sharks and other prehistoric animals that ventured too close were known to be prey. Of course, considering their massive size, that's not much of a surprise now, is it? Unlike its descendants, the Basilosaurus could not boast echolocation, and despite its massive size, it actually had a pretty small brain. I'm willing to bet that this thing is not as dangerous as the Megalodon, and therefore not as dangerous as the quote-unquote Red Megalodon in this video. Scientists believe that this small brain meant that the animal was not really into the herd movement or group hunting. They did, however, have complex ear structures, although not all of that was useful as it chose to live underwater. With marrow-filled vertebrae and bones, the Basilosaurus could actually stay near the surface of the water as it swam. There are no mentions of the quote-unquote red megalodon now, or even the quote-unquote gray megalodon. It's just content filler at this point. And some scientists have even pointed to the fact that they had small legs as proof that they had evolved to come onto the land itself. They had evolved from land to water. That's the only thing to describe. Perhaps for some reason, they simply decided not to and spent most of their time dwelling in the ocean instead. I guess we will never know. Dunkleosteus. I'm sorry, but this thing is no way of comparing to uh, the Megalodon. Now, there may have been some pretty fearsome fishes that tread the world's oceans. However, not many of them have been as physically formidable as the Dunkleosteus. The fish lived during the late Devonian period, which was said to be 382 to 358 million years ago, and it's said to have been especially notable for its armored-type skin, which allowed it to pretty much move along the water without fear of altercation. This guy has gone 100% off topic at this point. It's getting incredibly boring to just watch this guy spitting out useless facts that have nothing to do with the title of the video. It's just sad video at this point. With a frame that measured between 11 and 29 feet in length, the Dunkleosteus was the largest fish in that period, and despite the fact that the animal barely had any teeth, it did eat just about anything, including other fish. Its bite force was comparable to that of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. So Why does everyone have to compare everything to the T-Rex? Is T-Rex the Superman of the prehistopaleontology, T-Rex being used as a reference literally everywhere. I wouldn't be surprised if someone said that Dunkleosteus' length was around like almost one-third that of a T-Rex. So it was not a creature to be messed with. This animal also had an interesting ace in the hole, that being its head. All around the head and jaws of this creature, you could find what looked like armored plates and even though the animal was toothless, those plates acted kind of like artificial teeth that would help it to grab prey whenever it bit down. Another discovery about this creature was that the animal had an incredibly quick mouth. Doesn't mean it could compare to Megalodon in terms of dangerous. And, and this video is supposed to be about the quote-unquote red Megalodon that you treat as real for some reason. With the ability to open and close almost immediately, the Dunkleosteus' mouth formed something of a suction action. This would suck prey into it, giving them no chance of survival once that massive predator was on their trail. Combine this with the animal's tremendous bite force, and you find that it was a very formidable predator indeed. The Dunkleosteus could use its mouth to suck in its prey, then use the armored plates around its head and jaws to bite down. How does that even work? Where are you getting this from? 
Now, according to scientists, it had very few predators and ate just about everything from thick-shelled ammonites to other placoderms that had body armor themselves. And for a final doozy, consider this. In 2016, scientists discovered scrape and puncture marks on the armor of some of these specimens that indicated impact from even larger animals of the same species. Well, it's just variants of Dunkleosteus. This meant that there was a significant chance that these animals had fed on each other as well. An interesting fact is that the jaws of the animals usually changed as they grew. According to one study, a Dunkleosteus would see its jaw become more elongated as it grew older, while its anterior fang or cusp would also increase in size. I mean, I see nothing much wrong with here, but like, what is my feeling this? Not good. <laughs> because it's just stupidly boring at this point just to hear this guy spitting out useless facts that have nothing to do with the title of the video. I've said it a gazillion times already. What am I even doing? This study concluded that it most likely had a different taste for food as it grew up. Juvenile ones would be more comfortable with soft-bodied prey like small fish and sharks, while the larger ones would be more in the mood for large armored prey like placoderms. Considering that they lived in different eras, I would actually love to have seen a matchup between the Dunkleosteus and the Megalodon. No, the Megalodon wins 100% of the time. The Megalodon is simply too big for the Dunkleosteus to handle. Even if the Dunkleosteus has armor, the Megalodon has a stupidly strong bite force. But I guess for now, we can only speculate. Considering just how many animals have come and gone, one could only imagine the secrets that the oceans may hold. Many of us have believed that the Megalodon was the craziest thing to come out of the ocean, but the fact may very well be false now. What do you think, though? Do you think that there are even more animals that we've yet to see? And could there be a kraken lurking so A kraken! And then you're showing Mosasaurus from Jurassic World, which is stupidly oversized. Somewhere beneath. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Like this video and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. This video is just agonizing. Really? There really isn't anything to say. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed.